This pastor claims that a witch astral projected himself into his bedroom, and I believe him. You're about to hear something that is going to shock you. Several things that are going to shock you, some of which I have never heard before myself. This is not only going to bless you, it's going to empower you, and you're going to realize that you are right now living in a revival, and how you can turn the world upside down, you're going to be blessed by what you hear by my good friend, Troy Brewer. Troy Brewer, welcome back to Encounter Today, man. It's so good to see you. So happy to be here, Alan. Thank you so much, man, for having me today. It's awesome. Well, we got a lot to talk about, a lot to talk about, particularly witches showing up in your house, in your bedroom. But first, what's going on with you, man? What's new? It's hard to get you on the phone. It's, uh, it's <laughs> what, what have you been up to? Alan, ever since I went to Washington, D.C. and spoke at the International Summit Against Human Trafficking, which Come was on. actually at the Capitol building, um, the Lord just used it as a portal, man, to open up so many doors for us. And one of the things I've been doing is I've been working with governments throughout the world that once I got on their radar, they contacted me and said, hey, we are actually, we want to talk to you. And so through all these secret squirrel organizations that work with the American government and governments in the world, which I've never had any contact with before. They've literally been connecting me with people that they're doing operations with where they are busting child trafficking, but they don't know what to do with the kids because these third world countries do not have any kind of system. And these guys that are going to war with these cartels throughout the planet Earth tend to be Christians. And they mm. tend to be ex-American military Christian guys that love the Lord. And they're asking me, can we turn these kids over to you? And um, I had five kids turned over to me last week in one wow. country. I had another bunch of kids turned over to me in another country, another one in another country. And these kids come from the absolute worst debauchery of trafficking of children you can possibly imagine. And so I'm working with government leaders. I'm meeting with uh, the president of several different presidents of several different nations here over the next couple of weeks. And I've already been meeting with their staff and they are like, hey, we want to present to you this. If we go to war against this cartel, we anticipate on having so many kids. Mm. And they actually are holding back operations because they don't want the political mess of, yeah, we busted these cartels, but we let all these kids go. And then they got trafficked again or whatever while they were on our watch. They're like, we will do these operations if we can give these kids to you. And so, you know, Brother Allen, we're, we haven't, we didn't anticipate that happening. So, um, and we didn't know that that was going to happen and that King Jesus was going to drop this in our lap. And so we're saying yes to everything and we're scrambling to try and get the facilities done and the teams built and yada, yada of the existing facilities and the existing teams that we have. So, uh, we're going to rescue 25 kids next week. Come on. Uh, we're going to rescue more than that, actually, but we know exactly where to get 25 kids through one of these operations. Operations, and I'm going to go down to Bogota, I'll be there in three days. I'll be in Mexico City for three days. I'll be on the Guatemala border for three days, and then I'll be in Belize for three days. And we're going to be doing those sorts of things. So it's an incredible time. I know this thing, this hasn't been fully realized yet, but I wondered if, because you, you need people to support and to give and sow into this in order to be able to house these kids. And if there's a better place to sow, I don't know it. And we're going to put the link in the description for people to connect with your ministry to sow into this. Because this is, this is truly miraculous. You're telling me there's an army, first of all, of Christian soldiers who are operating secretly around the world, rescuing kids, and that governments are now reaching out and opening up to you saying, we just need, we just need you to be able to take these kids. Now, all believers have to do is partner with you in order to make this happen. So my question was, is it going to open up for the governments to help subsidize this as they partner with you? Yeah. So possibly we have not, we are just now exploring that and talking to them. They're trying to see how many, they're trying to see how, how legit we are and at what level that they can work with us. Uh, in one nation that there's a bunch of islands off the coast, they're doing these huge, um, child trafficking, child porno rings, and they're busting them. They actually, they actually man porn sites and they see when all these guys are coming from Europe over to these islands that are over there um, to, um, you know, to traffic these children and molest these children. They are actually looking at us and going, okay, we have the potential of giving you hundreds of kids in the very near future. Are you up to that? And I'm just saying yes to all of that. 
And um, I have, we are just exploring uh, with that. Is there some, can you guys help us with this? I, I honestly, I think that if they had the funds to do that, or if it wasn't already corrupted by somebody else, I think that they would already be doing this because mm -hmm. there's a lot of really good people in these governments, Alan, that love the Lord that are after these kids, but they want to make sure that they're taken care of. Wow. And uh, they're coming to us now. So I don't know. It's just something, man, that we're going to pray about. Yeah, we'll believe God for that. But even with that, they're going to need to see the support. Uh, the legitimacy of your ministry will be determined by the support that follows you. And as folks give and sow into what you're doing, it's going to further legitimize the work that you're doing so you can rescue more kids. So it's just, it's God is multiplying your seed when you give into this work. And again, the link is in the description. So you're heading down and God is opening up all these doors for you. But for those who don't know you, this isn't a new work for you. This may be new on the minds of many Americans as the sound of freedoms come out and your ministry may be new to them in recent years. Your, your ministry has exploded, but you've been going into South America as an example for a long, long time. When did you start doing ministry down there? We started particularly in the Amazon River uh, 21 years ago. And so we've been, we've been rescuing kids for 28 years now. And, um, and rescuing them and housing them and educating them and then putting them into forever homes. Uh, we've been doing that for 28 years. We sure have over, over 10,000. And we have over that, that we've actually rescued. We have over 4,000 kids in our care right now. And some of them we've had for 15 years, you know, mm. so right this second, we have 4,000 kids under our care and, you know, those numbers are growing daily because of this door that God has opened. And I want to get them, Alan. I just, I, I actually had a staff meeting this morning where I told everybody, I'm going to say yes to everything that they ask. And if it tanks us, it tanks us. If we get tanked because we were rescuing children, you know, then so be it. But I just don't think that's going to happen. The Lord, the Lord is, the Lord, the Lord loves these kids way more than I do. So I'm it's excited about it. It's, it's good. It's a Pauline anointing. When you read Philemon, you see that Paul had a passion for setting slaves free, for paying yes, their note, setting them free. And I think there's an apostolic anointing on this that doesn't come without warfare. Paul said, there are many doors now that are open to me, but there are many adversaries. A great and effectual door is opened, but there are many adversaries. And that seems to be where your ministry is right now, where it's been for a long, long time. But spiritually, when you talk about the battles that you've had to face, you told me the other day that you woke up one night and there's a witch sitting in the corner of your bedroom. Talk to us a little bit about this warfare that's surrounding what it is that you're doing now in ministry. Yeah, I just got back from the Amazon and uh, I came back and I was very sick, the sickest I've been in I don't know how many years, a um, long time. And I was sick and my wife was sick, my team was sick. Uh, Hunter is in the room right now. He was the only guy the entire team that didn't get sick. And which has made me suspicious of him. He's made of stiffer so, stuff, you know. Yeah, exactly. And uh, man, we came back and three weeks into this incredible sickness, just couldn't get it diagnosed. I actually was diagnosed 10 different things, you know, this, this, that, that, this, and they all came up positive. I'm like, that's not, that's not legit. I was in and out of the hospital trying to get better. Middle of the night, heard something messing around in, um, in my room and my first thought was there was an animal in my room. And as far out as that sounds, it's possible because I live out in the boonies and uh, maybe we let something in that we didn't know, you know, mm -hmm. and I thought, man, what is that? And so I got out of bed, was super quiet when I got out of bed and turned on the light, want to see what it was. And there was a man, there was a man physically in my room and he was standing over the bed and he was doing some kind of witchcraft. When he saw me, he was surprised and he was shocked and we made eye contact. It was probably about a second to a second and a half that I saw this guy and he was not wearing a shirt and he had all these dark blue tattoos and writings all over his body, all over his arms, on his hands. I saw all that. And then when I saw him, I knew he was an Amazon witch. Mm. And right as I started to speak to him, boom, he was gone. And I called very reputable men and women of God that the whole world knows that I'm friends with and called these guys and I went, oh yeah, we've all had that happen. I, I never experienced that before. Hmm. And I've been, I've dealt with next level witchcraft, uh, but I never had one show up in my room before. I mean, that's trespassing. 
in every single way. Hmm. I called my good friend Robert Henderson, who wrote The Courts of Heaven, and said, Robert, how in the world did, did, did this joker gain access to my, and he uh, at, gained access to my property? And he said, through covenant. And I said, how in the world? And he said, well, did you meet this witch? And I said, yeah, I actually saw him. We went way up the river, the Amazon, to go rescue some kids. And I gave this guy, he asked me, he asked me some things. He said, he said, did he give you a gift and did you give him a gift? And I said, uh, yes. And he said, did you offer him your friendship? And I said, yes. He goes, all that's covenant, Troy. Oh, wow. That's all covenant. And he said, he said, then did the guy give you anything to wear? And I said, yes. And was actually wearing it at the time. It was a, a bracelet. And I said, yeah. You know what? He actually did give me this. And he said, yeah, you're going to get rid of all that stuff. You're going to break those ties. Um, that kind of level of witchcraft, Alan, goes with the cartels that we're dealing with because, and it's so evil because not only are they selling untold number of children, but they're sacrificing untold number of children. And there is satanic ritualization that goes along with the sexualization of these children. And they sell that off to people in governments and people in the entertainment business and, and big time money people. They sell off that power. And that's not tinfoil hat kind of stuff. That's something that is a present reality of the day that you and I live in, and I've seen it firsthand. The next time that brother shows up, things will be different. I know what to do now. It doesn't sound like he's going to be showing up anytime soon unless you're knocking on his front door. I think you need to show up in his bedroom. I, think what needs I agree 10,000%. I agree 10,000%. And as a matter of fact, the village where that joker works at and where he's from, we have invaded that village. We have built a church there. Uh, we have put together a medical boat that Come goes on. up and down the river and takes because up until now, he's been the only quote unquote doctor that they've had. So a lot of, you know, they, he stands over girls whenever, whenever they're given birth. If somebody gets sick, you pay him money and he's a shaman and he does his, he does his magic and we're putting him out of business. We're, we're actually, the kingdom is coming and there's nothing he can do about it. And we're answering his evil with the goodness of God. And, mm. Uh, we're doing huge, tremendous food outreaches in that village. We, we got permission from the government for the very first time to be a non-indigenous people going into that part of the Colombian Amazon. And we were the first people that ever came in there. So That's no, right. He, They're very strict was, about that. I tell you, I tell you, brother, he was hostile and I didn't realize how hostile he was. And you know, you know what, Alan, I've ran into witch doctors before and I've actually, I've had some problems with witchcraft, but not. Not like this. This is different. This is a different thing. This thing of all these millions of children missing every year and the child trafficking that has taken place, it is definitely connected to a global Luciferian hmm. network and agenda. And it's, it's the present reality. And um, So you're saying that, the, people, that the level of witchcraft is building based, piled up on top of the bodies of the many that are being sacrificed that we're actually reaching, you know, Revelation twelve twelve mentions that Satan, knowing his time is short, comes down in great wrath. Are, are you saying that we are seeing an increase in this activity during our time? Not not simply that it was always there and we're just now seeing it, but are you saying it's actually increasing right now at a level you haven't seen before? Brother, I can tell you in the past thirty years that I've been involved in this, it the level of witchcraft has increased over the past two to three years more than I ever imagined I would see in my lifetime. All the kids on the Tex-Mex border that we are rescuing, they are all ritually scarred. Mm -hmm. And they are the survivors of so many others and they all have terrible stories of children that they've seen murdered. And it is, it's not just what people think it is. It is so much worse than that. And as I always say, if the body of King Jesus does not answer this, man, there's nobody else coming. So we have to answer it. Attention all revivalists and passionate believers. We're excited to announce Encounter Coffee has a new blend called the Wigglesworth Blend. The Wigglesworth Blend is a new, unique, bold roast of coffee designed to awaken you and your faith in the mornings. And with every single bag of coffee we send, you are helping us to set slaves free from human trafficking. With each cup of coffee, you are contributing 
to help us liberate children from the blight of human trafficking. Right now, for a gift of any size, you can get your very first bag of the Wigglesworth Blend if you go to EncounterToday.com and click on the special offer. If you would like more bags of coffee, you can go to the Encounter store and get as many as you like. But let's set slaves free together. Let's advance the gospel together with Encounter Coffee. So just to be clear, when you're talking about this witch showing up in your bedroom, you're referring to astral projection. I mean, we're getting into this guy didn't get on a plane and actually break into your house. And that we're, we're dealing with a, a, a level of spiritual attack that is unique for many believers to hear about. Yeah, you know, a lot of people might have the luxury to, you know, doubt this kind of stuff and go, I'm not sure about that. I do not. I've seen it. Mm -hmm. And so it happened. So it's like, okay. And I already had the paradigm for it. I already knew the word of God. I already know enough about the world to know, you know, all these things. You know, man, whenever the Bible says, do not partake in sorcery, it's not because you can't and God says don't. It's because you can and God says don't. Wow. You know, God doesn't say, you know, God doesn't give a command. Thou shalt not go to a cliff and fly off. That's not what he says. You know, it's like, no, you can be involved in these kinds of things. Astral projection has been stolen from something that God does in a very holy way. And you can find it in Acts chapter, I think it's, what is it? Acts chapter nine, is that correct? Or the Ethiopian eunuch, he went down and he went down in the water and got baptized. And when he came up, Philip was found in Azotos, which is about 70 miles away. And he was there just like that. Like, okay, well, is that astral projection? No, that is God Almighty not being subject to space and to time. Wow. Well, and he can open up doors just like he did with John and in, in the fourth chapter of Revelation say, come up here and move him at least 2,000 years in the future. Show him the rapture of the church and the tribulation and then pull him up again, take him 1,000 years into the future. Show him the great white throne judgment and then take him up again, take him all the way back 2,000 years ago and drop him off, say, write that down and give that to the seven churches. Okay, these jokers want to be the creator. Mm -hmm. These jokers want to operate on that level, and it requires, it requires a level of participation like what Nimrod had where he became a mighty man and he transformed from being, from just operating in the normal realm within the normal confines of human beings to actually operating in a supernatural realm while he was still yet in the flesh. It also requires a long, a long line of iniquity, which is why they abuse children after generation after generation and generation. This is all a part of today's witchcraft. I run into it all the time and we pull kids out of that. It's interesting that these fringe biblical concepts of spiritual warfare now seem to be perfectly legitimate and in the mainstream when we consider what we've been seeing in recent days uh, it seems that what we're seeing politically too that's being exposed is in parallel or in tandem with this you mentioned nimrod he was a, a hunter of men and there's cannibalism involved with that there's human sacrifice involved with that and he was trying to build a portal a tower to heaven so when you're talking about these cartels are you talking? Are you saying that it's not simply fringe? Because a lot of people, you mentioned the tinfoil hats. That yeah, there's some human sacrifice going on. Is it on the side happening here and there, or is this central to what these drug cartels are doing? Mainstream, absolutely wow. mainstream. And the reason why the drug cartels are doing this is because there's a market for it, and you have to understand that part of it. The market is within Hollywood. The market is within the entertainment business. The market is within next level business. The market is within politicians. And that's where the market is for the market is well established and the demand is there. And so these demonic cartels are actually providing it and providing all the things that actually go with it. And then, of course, they're involved in it. All you have to do is look back in the 1980s, man, when a brother by the name of Kilroy was killed in Matamoros, Texas, uh, Matamoros, Mexico. I was in Matamoros at the time that all that happened. He was a college student. And when they found him, they found that he was a part of a cartel ritualization, satanic operation. And this is what they did. They said that whenever they murdered him and took him through this horrible satanic ritualization, a very young man, a young man that had family, all he did was cross the border and go over there to go party or to go see Matamoros or just to have a good time. They actually did a ritual with him on him so that they would become bulletproof before they went off into war. And you're like, well, those are just savages and they just actually believe that. Hang on a second here, man. This is Jesus calling me. <laughs> you better he answer me the call. You he loves you. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Hang on. I have to answer this. Go ahead. Yes, Lord. 
Oh, I love you so much. I love you too. I'll tell him. Bye-bye. Okay. Hey, somebody take my phone for me, please. Hey, Alan, that was the Lord telling me that he loves you. And he told me he's watching you, man. <laughs> I think we I'm leave so that. Sorry about we that. need I to leave that in off. the interview, I think. That's the Lord I called Troy you. just to I, tell I don't him. care, man. Leave it in there. <laughs> I, I, you told me to be sure and turn it off, and I actually turned it on, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but no, I, I, this is mainstream. And you know, like when I was, when I was speaking on Capitol Hill here a few weeks ago, there was a lady that spoke before me that was part of, she was abducted as a teenager and she, she, they sent her to prostitution school. They actually have a school for high end prostitutes. Yes, sir. I've never heard of such a a thing. Okay. Well, let me tell you, I'll tell you what's going on in, if, like in places like um, Cambodia, those kinds of places. Alan, the Chinese government, the, the North Korean government takes Christians, Christian families, takes them because if you are found to be a Christian in North Korea, it is, it is prosecutable to the fourth generation. That mm-hmm. means if you're a dude my age and you're 57 years old, your family goes to uh, prison, your kids go to prison, your kids' kids go to prison, and then your great-grandkids go to prison. What they do, brother, is they take all those Christian kids away from those Christian families and they send them to prostitution school. And they cause those children to become sexual slaves and to learn how to be sexualized in a way that, that they can make money. And so all these jokers that are going to the, that are going to these Eastern c- countries and go in there and they are molesting these Asian little boys and girls. Those many times are, are Chinese Christian kids that North Korea has sold to China and China has put them into full blown pornography programs that the Chinese government actually funds and takes care of and makes hundreds of millions of dollars a year off of it. Those are Christian children that are being enslaved and prostituted. Wow. You've never heard that? No. Never I've seen once. it. I've seen it. I know exactly what I'm talking about. And anybody that tells me that that's not real, I'll just be like, well, you're just ignorant because I'm not. The other end of that is when I was with, when I was in, um, on this side of the world, when I was in um, uh, Washington, D.C., this lady, this beautiful, gracious woman, and I just loved her so much. She got up and she spoke and she said that she was a group of 40 teenage girls that had been abducted, been sent to prostitution school and then sold as high end prostitutes all over America. And she said, I am the one survivor out of a group of 40. She said this at Capitol Hill. She said, I am the one survivor out of a group of 40. And she said, I was sold more times right here in Washington, D.C. than I was anywhere else. And she said that on Capitol Hill. And I was like, how about them apples? Hmm. No shock to me. I've been involved in this in a long, long time. What was shocking to me was that someone got up and testified of that. And what was also shocking to me was it was not covered on the news in one single place that I can find. Not one. No news there. Wowzers. This is, this is amazing that this is being exposed in one of the darkest moments in recent history in our nation was certainly the authorities not being in favor of all of this stuff coming out. To what do you attribute this, all of a sudden, this exposure and this surge of an awakening to this desperate need? It's a great question. Brother, it's totally King Jesus. I think, I think that with the movie Sound of Freedom, and I want to tell you, even the name is such a prophetic name. You know, the sound of freedom, right? It is such a prophetic name. When that movie was released, um, I really think with all my heart that uh, there was a portal mm. that was opened. It was right on the heels of Roe v. Wade being overturned in this nation. There's a yeah. great move of God for the children today. And people have been saying, hey, man, revival's coming, revival's coming. But we don't think it's going to look like what it looked like before. Oh, it doesn't. I want to tell you, there's a tremendous revival in the rescue and the saving and the, and the actual revival of the spirit of children's hearts. 
hmm. of the, the hearts of the children turning back to the fathers and the hearts of the fathers turning back towards the children yes. before Jesus comes back. And I think that this is indeed a big part of that. I also want to say that I think that the movie, The Sound of Freedom, uh, when it was released, is very much has a cultural impact the way that Uncle Tom's Cabin did, um, you know, 200 years ago. Wow. That once that came into the predominant culture of the day, that it had been, you could politely dismiss slavery. Even though it was going on all around you, you could politely dismiss it. Once that book came into people's hands and they read it, they started asking the questions. Do you believe that this trash is going on around us and we never mm -hmm. say anything? Can you believe this? And it started the abolition, the, ab the abolitionist uh, era. Yeah. It started a movement. It started a revival by the people of God. It was the people of God that actually said we want to abolish it. It started the Underground Railroad and went all the way into the 13th Amendment. And that happened, the cultural catalyst for that, which always has to happen, was a book. Well, in this case, um, it's a movie, a portrayal of something. And I wanna tell you, I've never seen anything like it. I've been involved in this my whole life, Alan, and it's always just kinda, every time I talk about it, it was like a dink. It would like hit people and just bounce off and I'd go like, wow. In that case, the heavens were as brass when I would speak about it. Not anymore. And I'm very, very, very grateful for it. So we're riding the crest of a revival while looking for revival. And we need to wake up and realize that we're, we're in it right now. We're seeing it right now. Just because you don't have goosebumps doesn't mean you can't turn the world upside down. You can literally click the link in the description of this video and be a part of the revival. Experience it by setting slaves free. Setting children free. You can do it by clicking a button. Could you imagine the Apostle Paul being told, yeah, if you just touch a screen somewhere, that you'll be able to set slave free. It, it, is, it is supernatural, the hour that we're living in. Troy, what can people do right now if they want to partner with you? And let's make this happen. Thank you, sir. One of the things that people can do is they can actually plug into this trip I'm going to be doing, and it's going to take it's going to take place very shortly. And I I am doing this redemption road trip. We're going to be I'm going to be in Bogota, Colombia, and Mexico City, and the Guatemalan border, and then Belize over a period of 15 days. And I'm hooking up with all my rescue teams, and I'm hooking up with with the uh, political figures within those regions and also to the military regions. And we're just going to rescue a whole bunch of kids. And I'm going to show everybody this can be done. This is easy. When you're intentional on doing it, if you have the infrastructure to do it and we have that, you can actually do this. And I would encourage people, man, to look up my Redemption Road Trip. Uh, if it's during the time or even, it's a, even if it's after, to look up Redemption Road Trip and go there and check out what we were able to do, what we were able to show, and what we were able to be a part of. And then I would say, let that be a catalyst to actually be involved um, and be in prayer for us and support ministries that are actually doing something. And, uh, and also to support people that are, that are rescuing people, yes, but also support people and ministries that are rescuing and then raising those kids. It's usually one way or the other. And it's one of the things I found uh, when I was in DC is that's a unique contribution that we're able to make is we, that we don't just rescue, we actually raise them and give them forever homes. And I think that that's super important as well. Well, you can partner with Troy Brewer to set these slaves free. The link is in the description for more information. Check it out. Troy Brewer, thank you for everything that you're doing. Alan DiDio, I am so grateful for you and your friendship. And by the way, all of you viewers need to know this. Alan has actually been with me over the border. Alan took his family into Mexico with me and met a whole bunch of my rescue teenage girls and a whole bunch of little bitty kids. Howard is, uh, listen, Alan is a brave dude. And when he says that he loves this stuff, he doesn't just say it. He actually does the thing. And Alan, I will be forever grateful for you and your amazing family that I love with all my heart and loving these kids that nobody else loves. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you. We're just honored to be partnered with you. We're grateful for you and your ministry. Look forward to doing more with you in the future. Thank you. God bless. Attention all revivalists and passionate believers. We're excited to announce Encounter Coffee has a new blend called the Wigglesworth 
blend. The Wigglesworth blend is a new, unique, bold roast of coffee designed to awaken you and your faith in the mornings. And with every single bag of coffee we send, you are helping us to set slaves free from human trafficking. With each cup of coffee, you are contributing to help us liberate children from the blight of human trafficking. Right now, for a gift of any size, you can get your very first bag of the Wigglesworth Blend if you go to EncounterToday.com and click on the special offer. If you would like more bags of coffee, you can go to the Encounter store and get as many as you like. But let's set slaves free together. Let's advance the gospel together with Encounter Coffee.